glory goes beyond all faith.
Calvary Church family. It is great to be with you today as God gathers us for worship. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. A few announcements before we get started in worship today. Just a reminder that we are not church alone, that we get to partner with many nonprofits and organizations here in Bemidji and around the world. But this month, we are partnering with our Calvary Foundation to raise money for scholarships, for mission trips, college students, and seminary interns. And so in your Rebel Give and your giving sometime this today or this week, you can find that second offering ministry partner and give generously to that as well. Just an update that um, the newsletters will be coming out soon, and there will be an article in there responding to the survey. Thank you so much for your time and thoughtfulness with that. We have decided as a council and staff that we will try to have an in-person gathering here in the sanctuary starting November 1st. A lot of things to sort out still and more details to come, but please watch for that both on our Calvary website and in our Facebook and E! News. Also to let you know that if you haven't signed up for a Calvary All Confirmation, you're welcome to do that and study the catechism with us this year. We look forward to that conversation. And finally, quick update on the building repairs. We are ready to repair the roof. And so uh, the roofers will be in hopefully over the next few weeks before the snow flies and fixing part of the location that rained in our building last year and then doing some other preventative maintenance work. So please keep those thoughts in your prayers as well. Well, let's open our worship this morning singing our opening song, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. our voices sharing the prayer of the day. Let's pray. God of dreams and hope, you spoke to Joseph in his dreams, and those dreams led him to great danger, yet you used the challenges in his life to save the lives of others. In you, no good thing is accidental. You work in us and through us, even when we are not aware of your presence. Help us to know that you are with us, and that only you are capable of turning all evil to good. Amen. Good morning, Calvary Lutheran Church. 
Well, this morning we have the gift of hearing two more statements of faith. Our confirmats are gathering actually now uh, this Sunday morning, September 27th, in the back of our building in order to profess their faith, to be confirmed and affirm their baptismal promises. So let's keep them in our prayers. And next Sunday, October 4th, we'll actually be able to watch the confirmation service virtually together. Our first statement of faith this morning is Madison Hendricks. My name is Madison Hendricks. My earliest memories of church are with my grandma and grandpa Steele on Sunday mornings. We live on a farm and we are always busy. We didn't always have the time to make it to church. We choose to sleep in on Sundays sometimes, so my grandma and grandpa would end up taking us to church instead. My dad didn't always feel like it was necessary for us to go to church. He would always say, you don't have to go to church to believe in God. My mother, on the other hand, was, a, was raised a little different. As a child, she went to church all the time. She felt like it was necessary to go. As a child, going to church was a treat. It meant we got to go out for breakfast after service. It wasn't until seventh grade I understood why I went to church. God turned my life around. I had a connection with God. I believe God had an impact on my life. I started to have more friends. I became more comfortable and positive with my friends and with myself. I started praying more and could feel God's presence grow stronger. Some of my favorite verses are Psalms 23, one through two. A Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in the green pastures. He leaves me besides quiet, waters. Why I like the verse is because it reminds me of being in the pasture with cows and horses by the pond. Philippians 4 verses 13, I can do all the things through Christ who gives me strength. I know that I am stronger and I can get through almost anything knowing that God is with me. I can ask in prayer for guidance and strength. Romans 15 verses 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by power of Holy Spirit. I believe in God's presence and the power of prayer. Early this year, one of our horses was having a stomach issue. My dad said she wasn't going to make it. He said, we will probably have to put her down. We are going to church that night in the car on our way. There, my mom said to my sister and I, we all need to say prayers for the horse tonight. All three of us prayed that the horse would get better, not suffer and have a chance to live. The next morning, we had to get ready for school and get on the bus. In the pasture we drove by, she just laid there. I prayed on the bus that she would be okay. That afternoon, when we got off the bus, she was up walking around like a normal, healthy horse. Ever since that day, she has been fine. I believe God answers prayers. I believe in the power of prayer and faith in God. I know if I have problems or concerns that God is there one prayer away. Let us pray for Madison. God, we give you thanks for the power of prayer. We give you thanks that through prayer we have a direct line to you. We pray for Madison and her family. Continue to bless her and keep her as she affirms her faith. May she grow in knowledge and courage and in faith each and every day. We ask this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Let's hear from another statement of faith, Madison Jensen. My name is Madison Jensen, and this is my statement of faith. Before I start into my statement of faith, I would like to share why this place is very special to me. A few years ago, this is where my faith journey began. I got baptized here with a small group of really good friends and family. Um, for me, nature is my safe place. I just really enjoy going into nature by myself because it's a lot more quiet and peaceful. 
It's for me. It's like listening to music or reading a book. Um, when I'm paddling, paddleboarding late at night or early in the morning, like just before the boats are out, it's really calm and peaceful. Or just simply going for a walk, I just feel really thankful for everything that I have, and more importantly, I just feel really close to God. And I just feel really happy and special to like have that connection. Um, I think some of the reasons that I feel really close to God and nature and everything is because He created all of this for us, and that just makes me feel like really special. And I'm glad I can be part of it. I think that everybody needs to have like a really important spot that they go to like discuss faith and just like think about it. I think it's a really important part of your faith. Um, one Bible verse I really like is Mark chapter 9 verse 23. All things are possible to those who believe. This verse really speaks to me because it just tells me to keep believing and following in God. One other Bible verse I really like is Psalms chapter 130, verse 4. But with you there is forgiveness so that we can reverence serve you. This tells me that this is only going to, that it's okay to make mistakes. And I just have to learn from them and keep moving on in my faith. Um, I believe in God the Father because he gives me strength. I also believe that he has a plan for all of us, and I can't wait to discover mine and continue on my faith journey and keep growing. Thanks for listening to my statement of faith. Let us pray for Madison. God, we give you thanks that your creation is all around us. As we look around at these fall colors and the beauty of all that you have given us, may we give thanks and praise to you for the beauty of creation and the wonder and the majesty of it all. We give you thanks for Madison and her statement of faith. We give you thanks for her family and the ways that she continues to grow closer to you. Continue to pour out your Holy Spirit. Bless her and keep her and hold her close to you. We pray this in your son's holy name. Amen. We sing together, Take My Life. You know.
Hey, kids, it's Pastor Nate here. Now, have you been driving around with your parents and paying attention to the trees outside the windows? It is amazing. I have some leaves here, and there's greens, and there's reds, and there's oranges, and there's yellows. The colors are so vibrant. It reminds me, actually, of our story today. Joseph, and you know that jacket that his dad gave him, and the colors and the jealousy that it caused for his brothers? Well, this is a pretty amazing story, and so what I want you to do this morning is go on our website with your parents, go to calvarybemidji.org, click on Ministries, and then have your parents pull up the Kids Men page. On that page, you'll see this morning, there's about a 10-minute video that talks about the story of Joseph, and there's tons of resources there. There's coloring pages, there's games, there's activities, and different sheets to do. So check that out this morning and every week. You can check that out for new content and to stay tuned with our story of God's amazing story and how God's saving all people through Jesus. So let's give him thanks and praise as we see the beautiful colors of his creation. Our scripture from this morning, we begin with the psalm, Psalm 103, verses 1 through 8. I invite you to read this psalm together with me. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good as long as you live so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. This is the word of the Lord. Our reading this morning is from the book of Genesis, chapters 37 and 50. It's the story of Joseph, or at least parts of it. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his children, because he was the son of his old age, and he had made him a long robe with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Once Joseph had a dream... And when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. He said to them, Listen to this dream that I dreamed. There we were, binding sheaves in the field. Suddenly my sheaf rose and stood stood upright. Then your sheaves gathered around it and bowed down to my sheaf. His brothers said to him, Are you indeed to reign over us? Are you indeed to have dominion over us? So they hated him even more because of his dreams and his words. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him from a distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. But Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, throw him into this pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hand on him, that he might rescue him out of their hand and restore him to his father. Then Judah said to his brothers, What profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and not lay our hands on him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. When some Midianite traders passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifting him out of the pit, and sold him to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. When Reuben returned to the pit and saw that Joseph was not in the pit, he tore his clothes. He returned to his brothers and said, The boy is gone, and I, where can I turn? Then they took Joseph's robe, slaughtered a goat, and dipped the robe in the blood. They had the long robe with sleeves taken to their father, and they said, This we have found. See now whether it is your son's robe or not. He recognized it and said, 
It is my son's robe. A wild animal has devoured him. Joseph is without doubt torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his garments and put sackcloth on his loins and mourned for his son <clears throat> many days. Realizing later that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of their God, of your father. Joseph wept as they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him, and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good, in order to preserve a numerous people, as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. So this story, uh, this tale of Joseph and his brothers, is one of those Old Testament tales and stories that uh, has been the most familiar to me ever since middle school. When I was in eighth grade, our school choir did a medley of songs from the musical Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, uh, which I absolutely enjoyed. I loved it. Uh, and then later that year, we had the opportunity to go on a class trip to actually see the Broadway show of the stage, or see the Broadway show of that, uh, of that musical on stage down in the Twin Cities when they were on tour. It was my very first experience with any kind of musical, let alone a Broadway musical, and from, from the very first song, I was absolutely hooked. I remember that I really annoyed uh, my friend, Coley Nichols, who was sitting next to me, because after just about every single song, I would turn to him and say, isn't this incredible? This is the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I was so excited. Uh, and it was uh, a really, really incredible experience. How could someone not just sit up in their chair and join in the chanting when the entire cast out start, starts shouting, Go, go, Joe! Go, go, Joe! And then Donny Osmond comes out on stage in his bright coat of many colors. It was a really incredible time, really incredible show. And it was easy to cheer for Joseph. I mean, in the Broadway musical version of the story that we heard bits of today, Joseph is very clearly the good guy. Despite all of the cowardly machinations of his brothers and their, their jealousy for him, Joseph comes out on top every time, never telling a lie, resisting all the temptations that came his way, and saving everyone in the end. He's a superhero in a superhero story. And yet the actual story of Joseph and his family that we hear that little portion of today is a bit more complicated than the Broadway musical would have you think. There aren't actually a lot of true good guys and bad guys in the story. Really, Joseph's entire family is more than a little bit dysfunctional. We can start with his dad, Jacob, who is also called Israel after he had that fight with that angel. And Jacob has a real streak of dishonesty, and always had, which you might recall from the time that he tricked his own father, Isaac, into giving him a blessing that Isaac had planned to give Jacob's brother, Esau. That led Esau to try to kill Jacob for a number of years after that. And that family quarrel might be in the rearview mirror by the time we get to the story today, but even now, in his older age, with all these children that he has, Jacob is not exactly promoting family harmony. Right out of the gate in our reading, we hear about the particular problem that they're facing. Now Israel, Jacob, loved Joseph more than any of his other children. Not exactly a recipe for success when it comes to family harmony. I think we all have some experience or another, uh, or some story of some kind relating to the notion of favoritism, right? Maybe not necessarily in our own family lives, but what about in our work lives, our school lives, 
our circles of friends, our communities, maybe even in our church family. Imagine what it would be like to be in that place with Joseph and his brothers, to have that favoritism distinctly and directly and obviously expressed by a parent to their children. Sure, kids, I care for all of you, but your brother Joseph, well, he's my favorite, and I'd trade any of you for him. Sure, I care about you, but I'm going to give him all of the best gifts. I'm going to trust his judgment above yours, probably maybe even carve out a larger share of the inheritance for him, just because I happen to like him more than I like you. It's no wonder that Joseph's brothers resented him. And Joseph wasn't exactly someone who made that easy on them either. Even without his father's obvious favoritism, he was not the easiest guy to like. First of all, he would put down his brothers uh, whenever he was speaking about them to his father. Or as Genesis says, he brings a bad report of them to his father. He was arrogant, acting as though it was natural that Jacob loved him more because he was just better than the rest. And then, of course, there were Joseph's dreams. From his childhood, Joseph had the gift of dreams and the interpretation of dreams. And as we hear in our reading today, his dreams were hardly ones that would tend to heal over any rifts in the family. Joseph would have these dreams where everyone else would end up bowing down to him or worshiping him in some way, shape, or form. His brothers, his family, he even had dreams where the sun, moon, and stars would bow to him and give fealty and loyalty to him. Think about what it would be like if you were one of Joseph's brothers, working out in the field with this one particular brother of yours. A brother who has a habit of talking about you behind your back. A brother for who no apparent reason your father just loves more than he loves you. You're out there, and then this brother just stops working for a moment, leans on his shepherd's staff and says, you know, I just, I keep having these dreams about how much better I am than you are. Is it any wonder that his brothers wanted to kill him? And really, the relationship between Joseph and his brothers is only the tip of the iceberg here. There's episodes in the story of Jacob's family where some of his sons end up sleeping with their father's concubine. Stories of murder and cruelty for its own sake. It's a mess. This is a family with issues that puts every other family with issues to shame. They are broken. And strangely, I find some comfort in that. Because I think all of us, no matter how beautiful and wonderful our family life might be, experience and have experienced pain in our relationships. Regret for things we've said or maybe things we wish we would have said or wish we hadn't said. Anger or loss over words or actions said and done by those closest to us. Sometimes even estrangement, the complete death of relationship between us and others in our family, in some way, human brokenness touches us all in the way we relate to each other. And the reason that I take comfort in the fundamental brokenness of Jacob's family is that I can find my own brokenness in it. Now, I have to admit, I've never plotted my brother's death or ended up selling him into slavery, and my parents never played favorites between the two of us. But there is certainly still brokenness. I have an aunt, an uncle, and two cousins that I didn't see for most of my childhood because of the broken relationship that existed between my aunt and my grandparents. I have another cousin who I never met at all, because he was born after my aunt was assaulted, and my grandparents wouldn't even acknowledge his existence. I didn't even know he existed until I was well into my high school years. We all experience brokenness in our relationships. Brokenness that is evil. 
brokenness that is death, a form of death. But the story of Joseph carries with it a gospel truth, that there is no brokenness that can overcome the goodness of God. For as terrible as Joseph's relationships with his brothers were, so much so that they wanted to kill him and send him into slavery or sell him into slavery, God uses Joseph and his dreams of grandeur to save countless people from famine in Egypt, including those brothers who had been the ones who sold him into slavery in the first place. As we hear towards the end of our reading today, which is the final piece of that story, we end up skipping the whole piece of what happens in Egypt, but I think you should go back and read it in Genesis if you can. But as we hear towards the end of that reading, Joseph says to his brothers, when they're finally in that place at the end, even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. That's Genesis 50, chapters 20, or verses 20 and 21. <clears throat> so at the end of the Joseph story, at least this part of it, we have a reconciliation between these brothers, a restoration of a relationship that, <clears throat> that was well and truly dead. This is restorative justice, the kind of justice that God is all about. It's the kind of justice that we see time after time in the story of Jesus, right? Especially in the final act of Jesus' ministry, his death and resurrection. In fact, we can hear Jesus Christ speaking some of those same words, can't we, if we think about his ministry, those same words that Joseph speaks at the end to his brothers echo just as strongly as if they were coming from the mouth of Jesus. Listen to this again as though it was coming from Christ. Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. Even the ultimate evil, death itself, wielded in cruelty and hatred against God's own Son, is used to bring about the resurrection of all creation, the restoration of relationship between God and humanity. Friends, when you see brokenness in your relationships, in your families, in your lives, know that you are not alone. Know that you are loved. And know that at the end of the story, there will be life from death. A finale greater than any Broadway show could ever possibly describe. Restoration for all God's daughters and sons. Amen.
The Apostles' Creed is a statement of faith that Christians have been saying together through the centuries. Let's say it now together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join in with me as we have prayers of the people. God, you have called us to be a people of prayer, to continue the ministry of intercession handed on to us by Jesus Christ himself. And so we come before you with confidence, bringing our prayers for the world you love. In your mercy, hear and answer. We pray for those who, like Jesus' disciples, find themselves surrounded by high winds and stormy seas, those who feel overwhelmed by events and circumstances, the loss of a job, the death of a loved one, serious accident or illness, chronic pain, depression, or divorce, and who don't know where to turn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who, like Joseph, find themselves deeply wounded by people they love, people they thought they knew and trusted, and who are struggling to know how to respond. We pray for those who, like Peter, are experiencing a crisis of faith, who long to wholeheartedly trust in God, but are held back by questions and doubts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who, like the prophet Elijah, have fallen into despair who have begun to doubt God's presence and power or question God's call in their lives. We pray for those who, like Joseph, have had their hopes and dreams crushed, those whose lives have suddenly taken a different turn and who now wonder what lies ahead for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, It is not your will that any should suffer. We offer our prayers for all those who hunger and thirst, those who live in the midst of violence or poverty, and those who feel abandoned or ignored by the world around them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Through the life-giving power of your Holy Spirit, Make your sustaining presence known to all who are in pain or need, so that they too may know your love and live. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives to intercede for us. Amen. Now let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our preview for next week, October 4th, the first 
Sunday in October. Can you believe it? Already almost here. Amazing. Um, So October 4th, the worship service on that Sunday morning is going to be a confirmation worship service. So all of the confirmation students are going to lead different parts of the worship service instead of people like me. I don't need to be there, just the students. It's going to be great, so tune in for that. And part of that as well will be lots of statements of faith. Please receive the benediction. So now we leave the space of worship. And while so much of the road ahead is uncertain, the path constantly changing, we know some things that are as solid and sure as the ground beneath our feet and the sky above our heads. We know God is love. We know Christ's love endures. So go in peace and serve the Lord.
His love endures forever. His love.